All right, good morning, everyone. Please stand and worship with us.
opportunity to be in this place. I ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to what the speaker has to say to us, and that we would take in every bit. I ask that you help us to become selfless and to serve only you. Protect us as we go from this place. In your name, amen. Bring it up. Come on. Give it up to God, to the worship team. That was. Where else do you get that on Tuesday mornings, right? What a great way to start the day. Again, you had first period, you know, at school. But then you get to come in here and you get to worship God. It's powerful, right? Man, so excited to be here this morning in chapel with you here at Emmanuel. So what is it all about this year, right? What is our, the thing we're chanting? Serve, fight, lead, right? Serve, fight, and lead. That is what we are calling all of you here at Emmanuel to do. And so what we're doing here in chapels on Tuesdays and Thursdays when you're not in your, your guy-girl breakouts is we're looking at each one of those elements. We're going to work through serve. Then we're going to work through fight. And then we're going to work through lead. And we're going to see what the Bible tells us about how to serve as Christ served. We're going to work through the Bible to see how Christ taught us to fight. And then finally, we're going to wrap it all up with how we are to lead as Christ led. You've already heard from two individuals, right? You've heard from Mr. March, who just took it out of the ballpark, did a phenomenal job ushering in what it looks like as a whole for those three things. Then we had Mr. Stevens that kicked off our serve. Today, you're going to hear from a phenomenal individual. This is a man that dedicates his life, everything that he does to serving Christ and living as Christ lived. It's a man that played in the NFL. Someone that could easily have walked away from what happened to him in his career and gone, it's over. Forget it. God, you, you gave me a, an awful thing. Why, why would you provide me with this skill to play in the NFL but then take it away from me? No, he doesn't do that. Instead, what does he do? He starts a business. He doesn't start a business for financial gain. No, he starts a business to serve people with what coffee? Man, don't we love coffee? And don't we love cup of joy coffee, right? It's delicious, but we don't love it because it's good. We love it because of the mission that this man has put forward in serving people through what he does. This is a man that is busy, but what does he do? He stops. Driving his car, he sees a man on the side of the road with a sign up, and he stops his car and simply just has a conversation with him. A cup of coffee. It's a man that puts aside his needs for the needs of others. Why? Because he understands what it means to serve Christ and to serve as Christ served. That it's about others. It's about the gospel message. That's what it's about as we serve. So let's give a big Emmanuel welcome to Mr. Zach Follett. That's quite the introduction. What's up? What's up? What's happening, Emmanuel? Yeah! Let's go. All right. I got a little linebacker in me, so just I get excited. Uh, man, what an introduction. Yeah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he gave me the NFL. He gave me football. And, yeah, he did take it away. But through that, I got to see how an almighty God can deliver you through trials. Um, and he was so good to me, so rich, that, yeah, I, I experienced the goodness of God. And I'm like, man, I've got to go tell the world about this God who is full of love, grace, and mercy, and strength, and comfort. How is the best way to do it, Lord? And he said, hey, check out coffee. Look at how many people love coffee and how you can connect to people through coffee. And he says, go open a coffee shop and go spread the love of Christ through coffee. I'm 24 years old. All I've ever learned how to do was hit people. And he says, you're going to go start a business. And I now had to go manage uh, employees your age that are um, a little more gentle than football players. Uh, and, and I had to learn that. And so, yeah, I, I, I have a joy even today to come and speak to you guys. Like as busy as I may think that I am, I'm not. This is the whole reason why um, 
God built the platform of Cup of Joy to allow me this position to come encourage um, all of you to follow Christ because Christ is all. He is in all things and in him all things hold together. He is the joy of the world, right? The joy, right? We're living in a world where we're just craving and constantly trying to be filled. Anxiety is, is, is ripping, fear is ripping through the country, but we have the hope. We have the prince of peace, right? You can have all the money in the world, all of it, trust me, and you cannot have peace. Money cannot buy you peace. And so we come here at Emmanuel today celebrating a God, worshiping a God on a Tuesday. We're worshiping a God. Do you guys realize, like, how good you have it here? It's amazing. Uh, at Clovis High School where I went, we were, you don't talk about God. The only time you hear of God's name, it was being brought up in blasphemy. And so to see God's favor over, over the kids at Emmanuel has been great. And so we get to come in here and talk about serving. As I prayed on this, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I've realized as I've got to walk, I call it Christendom and cup of joy. I didn't grow up in the faith. I um, had no clue who God or Jesus was. And I sat here and after being for 13 years, I've been a follower of Christ. And I've got to come in and I see how the church operates. I see how the body of Christ operates. And I'm just like, man. There, there, there's two different types of Christians as I prayed about, hey, I want to encourage you guys to go and serve. You're not going to be able to serve unless you have the Holy Spirit of Christ in you. Because otherwise you're going to have the, the flesh and you're going to serve yourself. Am I right? Am I fair to say that without the Spirit of God, we are programmed by our sinful nature to serve ourselves? So when you're driving down the street, you see the guy on the side of the street, you don't care about him. He has nothing to do for me. I'm going to keep driving because I need to get to where I need to go. But if the Spirit of Christ is in you, he's going to say, hey, Zach, that's my son. I love him. I see him. That is Tommy. Go and get a cup of coffee, sit down with him, share the love of Christ with him, and tell him how much I love him. And, and, a son, and, and, and my son, Jesus Christ, who died for him, give him that hope. So I went and did it just because the Spirit of God, again, without the Spirit, I'm, I don't care about Tommy. I went and talked to Tommy, and I told him about the hope of God, and I left. I didn't ever talk to him again. Six months later, he goes and sends me a Facebook message. Hey, Zach, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping that day and sharing the love of God with me because that was the hope that I needed to get off the streets. And I went and got enrolled in Cabrillo Community College. And now I'm, I'm, I'm giving the commencement speech at my graduation because of I came from pushing shopping carts and living under the freeway in Fresno to where now I'm graduating and they asked me to go and speak. And he goes and gives that speech and then someone sees it and they write an article about it. And next thing you know, on Thanksgiving, it's on Fox Sports and it's for the whole entire world to see. And it's not because I'm anything great. It's because of the great Holy Spirit in me. And he says that when you do good works, you're like a city on a hill to put it on a lampstand to shine for everyone to see. And so if you want to live a life fulfilled, you're in high school, man, what do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? College. If you want to live a life with purpose, you get that Holy Spirit in you. You feed it with the word of God because that is the food that the spirit needs to be strong. And you just keep eating that word. And then now you are going to be a vessel, a strong, mighty vessel for the kingdom of God, that God who is sitting upon his throne, he's going to see you and he's going to be like, I need you and I'm going to put you to service. And he's going to take you on a ride of a lifetime. Never did I think that I'd be pouring hearts and lattes, ever. But I see what God can do. And I always trust his plan more than mine. Um, and so, again, as we're going to talk about serve, I, I, as I prayed, God said, hold up, let's shake them up a little bit. And I love I loved to shake things up. I, I'm intense and I like to just get after it. Um, and so I'm going to be real with you. My experience in Christianity, there's two types of Christians. There's one. Holy Spirit-filled Christian, someone who has tasted and seen the goodness of God, they can't keep their mouth shut, and they constantly are talking about them. They know to put off the desires of the world and of the flesh. They get in their word. They, 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 they've tasted him. They give their whole life to serve him. They know him. They can't stop talking about him. They got the Jesus bumper sticker, and everywhere they go, I have tasted him, and I got to tell you about him. And they're a spirit-filled Christian that is constantly waking up, dying to the things of the flesh, going and living in community because they know that, man, I can't be a, a, a solo Christian. I'll get eaten alive. 
Because this battle that we face is not against flesh and blood. It's against the dark spiritual forces of the heavenly realms. And there is a war going on. Do you guys know that? Anyone here? Anyone raise your hand. Do you know that there's a war? Okay, we got some education. A couple of you know. But there is a war going on and we know that I can't fight it myself. Because the enemy, the darkness, can easily trick and deceive me. So I need other brothers and sisters, and so therefore I'm in a community. I'm a Christian that's in community, relying, being transparent, sharing my faults and sins, repenting daily, and asking for the Lord to, to use me and, 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 and bear fruit through me. Uh, a fruit-bearing Christian. That's one Christian. Then there's the other Christian. And this is the Christian by default. This may hit home for some of you, but it's just what it is. Some of you are here right now, and I'd have to say, after I go to Cup of Joy, and I'm always talking to people, man. Hey, man, talk to me, man. Tell me about the gospel. You're a Christian, and you're, tell me, tell me about the gospel. Uh, what gospel? Um, yeah, tell me, what's the gospel? Um, you know, like, you know, God loves us, and he's full of love. Oh, oh. You call yourself a Christian and we don't even know what the gospel is? To me, I find that to be a stark contradiction. That how can you call yourself a Christian if you don't know the story that makes you a Christian? Because if you don't believe the gospel story, you can't f be a follower of Christ. You don't understand what he has done for you. So then that gets me back to there's the other type of Christians that are Christians just by default. Oh, well, my, my, my mom and dad are Christians, and so I'm, I'm raised in a Christian household. I personally don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you know what I mean? I'm a Christian. That's what we, I go to Emmanuel. I'm good. I'm saved, right? I go to Emmanuel. Well, unfortunately, being a student at Emmanuel on Judgment Day will not get you in. Hate to break it to you, but being a good person will not get you in. There's a lot of Christians that are like, hey, Zach, you know what I mean, this whole faith stuff, I just I go and live my life and I do good things. And God will be good with that because I see so many people in the church and that's not really my style. There's a lot of hypocrites. So I'm just going to focus on being a good person Christian. That doesn't really get you in either. And so I'm here to talk to those that if that's hitting home of like, hey, yeah, you know what? I, 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 when people come up here and worship and there's people jumping, I think that's weird. And I don't know why they're like obsessed with this God. Because you haven't tasted the sweet salvation um, that he offers through Christ. And so you look at it, okay, am, am I this Christian or am I this Christian? And right now I really want to speak to the, to the this Christian because if I'm going to sit here and try to encourage you to go serve but you're doing it without the power of God, then it's meaningless. It, it's very hard to do because your desires will trump and, and you're going to go to, to serve yourself. People who desire to be a follower of Christ call themselves Christians, but they don't understand the gospel. Uh, for, the, for them themselves have placed their face in Christ, but assume that they're on the team by association. So to, 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 to drive home the point, it's who watched the Niners game last night? All right, Niners, go Niners. We saw Debo Samuels, right? If I was, if I, if I was a Niner fan, I would be wearing a Debo Samuel jersey because he's, he's dope, right? He's awesome. Well... Let's just let you know something. If you went to the store and bought a Debo Samuel jersey, does that make you a part of the 49ers? No, it does not. You are not Debo Samuel even though you wear his jersey. You are not. You can't go and put on a 49er jersey and walk in on the sidelines and be like, I'm on the team. <laughs> Security's going to kick you out the club. You're gone. So it's like. How foolish, if, if we're looking at that, like, yeah, that's, 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 that's ridiculous. Same way goes as Christians who put on the Christian jersey and walk around and being like, I'm a Christian. But we have nobody telling you that, hey, bro, you can't wear that jersey. You're, you're, not, really, you're not really a follower of Christ. You don't understand the God. You don't even know God, but you're sitting here repping the jersey. And why this is passionate to me is because, unfortunately, I see so many people wearing the jersey, not filled with the spirit of Christ, and then are walking around and doing things that are bringing shame to the name of Christ. And it's like, bro, they were never even on our team. And now you, you, and you don't even want to come and see the goodness of God because what these non-team members have represented in the name of Jesus. I ain't about that. I love my God, and I don't want any imposters trying to represent him. 
And so I'm here today to go in and not to say, if that is you, man, I, hear me now. I'm not to bring any condemnation, any shame. I did a little shake to let you guys know that, oh, man, if, if I felt like I've been wearing this, this, this fake jersey and I'm not really on the team, I'm here to tell you the good news, that there is a way to get on the team. And that is through what you guys have in front of you. It's called the gospel, right? And I know that people are like, oh, Christianity, and of course I know the gospel. Well, I'm being honest when I say this. When I ask customers at Cup of Joy who got their Cup of Joy, right? They're Christian, I got my Cup of Joy. And it's like, oh, what's the gospel? 90% of the people I ask what the gospel is, they cannot tell me what the gospel is. And I'm like, snap. I need to sharpen my sword and start preaching the gospel a little bit more. And so that's what this was uh, in an attempt to do that. Um, but to get into scripture right now, to kind of to go and, and talk more about um, true and false disciples. In Matthew 7, 16, it talks about, by their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. And so when we talk about fruit, what fruit are we talking about? Who here has the boldness and the education or maybe memorization to stand up and name the fruits of the Spirit? Anybody here? Right there with your hand up. Yep, 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 red in the red. I saw the hand go, you got it, be bold. All right, my, my man in blue, do you want it? All right, what you got? The, the fruit of the spirit. Amen, my brother. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Woo! That's dope. It took me like 10 years to remember those. Good job for you. Um, so, yeah, that, that when I read the scriptures and it's talking about bear good fruit, what is that fruit? That's why we need to be students of the word and understand that when it talks about the fruit of the spirit, he's talking about bearing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruits that I need to be producing when I'm in Christ. And you can tell a tree by the fruit it produces. So when you can look at people's and their actions, I don't need to wear a Christian shirt or tell you, you should be able to tell by the fruit that we produce, whether you're a good, whether you're on the team or you're not on the team. And so then um, it goes on, and this is a scary one. This always shook me up. Um, and rightfully so. When it goes on, it says in 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me. That's basically like he's saying, hey, Time to take off the jersey. That's mine. You're not on the team. Like that, that's a, that's a soul-shaking verse. Like, oh, snap. How do I make sure that I'm on the team? Well, here's the good news as we talk about the gospel and the Holy Spirit being, um, you know, Christ says that in, in Romans 9, I believe, that if the spirit of Christ is not in you, you are not in Christ. That's massive. We should be like, yo, I need this spirit because I am not in Christ. I'm wearing a team's jersey, but I'm not really on the team. And the spirit of Christ is what makes you be on the team. So here's the good news is ask and seek and it will be given to you. Uh, which of you of his son asked for bread and you will give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So, in everything, do to others as you would do to them. Um, and this sums up the law of the, of the prophets. And it goes on to say that if you ask for the Father, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, he will give it to you. And so once you hear this gospel and this good news in the gospel, and it talks about, 
You guys have your cards? Is it up? Or if you guys have your cards, we're good. So follow along with me. The good news. The Father, Son, and the Spirit. So in the beginning, there was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They were up in heaven. There was no beginning to God. He always was. And in that, they had a plan that they were going to make creation to be made in the image of God and to go and um, uh, reflect and do good works and be in relationship with them. So he went and created the heavens and the earth. And in the heavens, he created all the angels up in the heavens. And he created one super duper nice angel, right? His name was Lucifer. And this Lucifer looked at himself. He said, man, I'm, I'm dope. He made me better than the rest of these angels. And then he looked at God on his throne. He said, I want to be worshipped by this God. I want to sit on this throne. I want them to worship me. And so he sits there on his pedestal, and his native tongue is lying. So he was so good. These angels just saw themselves created from God. They're with God. And he said, hold up. Yo, one-third of you, he convinced them that if you follow me, I can do more for you. Worship me, and I will do better for you than this God. That's how good he is at deceiving. God sees this, and Ezekiel says, like a, like a lightning bolt, he was cast out of heaven. Down, um, and he said, I'm going to create a lake of fire, and that's where you will go dwell, uh, dwell for eternity. But until then, you're going to be slithering around like a snake on earth. And not only did he throw out Satan, but all the elect angels that followed Satan, and that we now know as Lucifer be translated into the devil. And those angels are now known as demons. This is, again, it's a spiritual battle that we face, good and evil. Well, then from there we go into the knowledge of the uh, uh, tree of good and evil. That's when Adam and Eve, Eve went up, the serpent deceived them, got them, right? Got them, sin entered into the world. And from there, death and destruction has been going abound. We started to become murderers, envious, adulterous. Um, sin ran wild. We were cursed. God saw this. He was just distraught with his, with his creation. He, uh, Noah, the flood, and he, and he restarted. But then he came and gave us the Ten Commandments, Mo, uh, Moses on Mount Sinai, gave us the Ten Commandments. He said, hey, here's my law. Check it out. You have to obey these things. If you disobey any of these, you have broken the law and you now no longer measure up to the standard that I have set. And so it's like, oh, man, that's the bad news because I'm pretty sure it says in there, do not lie, do not steal, do not commit adultery. Jesus says if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. He said do not murder. Oh, I've never murdered somebody. He said if you've ever hated your brother or your sister, you have created murder in your heart. So we have fallen short of this law. That is the bad news today, folks. That we have fallen short and that good person is crossed out because there's no such thing. It says that all men have fallen short of the glory of God. And so there is nothing we can do. Our little thing of like, okay, yeah, I know I've sinned, but religion tells me I need to go do all of these things to be made right with him. Here you go, God. And he says that is a filthy rag compared to God's righteousness. So we're kind of screwed. That's the bad news. Well, now the gospel translates into good news. And the good news is but God who was rich in mercy displayed his mercy through Christ, and he sent Christ in a manger humbly. So when Jesus back up on this throne, that was the plan all along. Jesus, it's time to go. He gets up off of his throne, lays his crown aside, comes in human flesh, and he goes to live a life of perfection for 33 years. And while he was, um, and, and then his own people, which was prophesied, would reject him. And he went and died on the cross because he said, I will be the cup of wrath. I will drink the cup of wrath that was intended for us. Because of that imperfection that all of us are stained in, unfortunately, we don't get to get into the VIP heaven on our own. Someone had to come in our place and die for us, Jesus Christ. And it's through faith in Christ, believing that you were made in the image of God, by God, there is this war going on. God loves us, does not want to leave us in our sin. He sent his son Jesus to be the perfect unblemished lamb to die on the cross from us. Having faith in that and, and repenting and saying, God, I believe in you. And we know the story. Easter, Jesus Christ did not uh, stay in that grave. He rose and he conquered the grave. And Jesus is Lord. And so once the man, Jesus Christ, Lord, our king, comes up out of that grave, he goes and says, all power and authority has been given to me. 
Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. Folks, write that down. Remember that. Because that is the great commission. That is why we are here, because we love Jesus, and our Lord gave us a commandment. So your, your top priority list shouldn't be, man, to get the good job, to make the most money, to have four kids. To have, I need to make sure that I am teaching people to obey the word of God. And I, I want to have, when I go to heaven, man, I want to have some baptisms on my belt, right? I want to be able to go and say, Lord, like you told us I need to be baptizing, but I didn't leave that just to the pastor. He said all of us are to be making disciples and baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And through that, God gives us the gift of faith to even believe this story. And it's through that gift of faith, we believe that we are sinners and there's no good thing in us. And it's through Christ's blood and his resurrection is what makes us alive in Christ. And it's through that belief when Jesus went and said, hey, man, don't trip. I know you guys don't want me to leave, but it's for your benefit that I go. Because I'm going to go be with the Father and I'm going to send you the great trusted spirit, the great counselor. And he will be with you to the very end of age. And guess what? You're going to be doing better things than I was able to do with you. So you mean to tell me the spirit of God lives in us? And so now at the end of it, it talks about obedience. Because now we are to pick up our cross daily and, 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 and follow him. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Are we at 40? All right. It's to love your, uh, with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, to love God is to obey him. And it's through obedience is how you fulfill the greatest commandment. And so we got to wrap it up, and I just want to leave you with this. If you want to go and serve, um, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for, for many. Stay connected to the vine. And it says, if you stay connected in him, you will do great things. Without him, you can do nothing. And so my prayer for you guys is to be filled up with the Spirit so you can go and serve and love your neighbor, your family, and anyone that God puts in your way. It's through the power of Christ that we're going to be able to serve and make a difference and shine the light of Christ in this world. And so I'll pray over you. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that uh, the gospel goes forth, that we sharpen our sword of the gospel, for it is the power of God to save. And it's through that gospel message where your spirit can give us the revelation and make residence inside of us. I pray that your spirit makes residence inside of every single soul listening today so that they are equipped with the power to do great works for your kingdom, God. So when we stand before you on Judgment Day, we got the real jersey on, and you stand up with a clapping o ovation and say, Good job, my good and faithful servant, Father. We love you and we thank you for your grace and the blood that Jesus uh, dripped on our behalf so we can may be, be made right in your eyes, Lord. In Christ Jesus, I, I say these things and I ask. Amen. Amen. As always, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know the bell rung, but we want to pray over this man right now, right? Not just me. I want you to put your hands out as we pray over Zach, the ministry he's a part of, and the things that he's doing in our community. All right, bow your heads. Lord, I thank you for what this man brought forth today. I pray that um, as he steps out of a man, off Emmanuel's campus and again into the mission field, that you use him in a powerful way to share the gospel. That as he said that he needs to sharpen his blade to share the gospel and to not just share it with those who need to hear it, but to share it with us as believers who need to Go forth and actually start presenting that gospel to those who are around us, Lord. May you use him in a powerful way with his staff. May you use him in a powerful way with the, the people that are going to walk into each and every cup of joy. May you use him, Lord. May you be with his family. May you watch over them. May you protect them. May you be with them, Lord. May you be with him as a man for you. May you be, be with him as a man for his wife and for his kids, Lord, for his family as a whole. May you be with Zach. May you watch over him. May you protect him. And may you use him to share your gospel in a powerful way. I pray this in your name. Amen. All right. Seniors.